Okay, I think we'll get started. So another fun lab today. Uh, we have done one lab where we looked at a shift register that was serial in parallel L out. Uh, that was the eight, the seventy four five ninety five. Well, today we're going to look at sort of the opposite of that, the seventy four one sixty five, which is a parallel in serial out, and so it takes in uh, eight bits of data at once and then shifts them out uh, via a clocking mechanism. And so <clears throat> we'll get a chance to learn a little bit about the circuitry of the 74165, which again is another really important member of the 74 family. Uh, talk a little bit about clocking, and as I said in the video on the uh, 74 uh, 95. This was always a bit confusing to me. This the, just the jargon of the word uh, clocking. Uh, it feels like that should be a repetitive pulsing. But when you're working with shift reg registers, what you really want to think of is just a, as if you're pushing a button as many times as you want here. It's not a continuous clock pulse. And so in this case, we're going to shift each of these bits of data out of the serial. Uh, we're going to save those to memory, uh, and we're going to use then this as a way to control the blinker. So we have done bl uh, blinking LEDs uh, very often, but uh, here we're going to have control over what frequency we want. So by using the shift register, we have uh, a control over the, the frequency based on writing the binary number into the shift register. And then we'll read that into memory, and then uh, using our delay mechanisms, have our LED blink based on the number we put in the shift register. All right, so let's look a little bit cl more closely at the shift register itself. So this is a 74165 uh, again. The ground and the 5 volt, as for many of these chips, are diagonal from one another. So <laughs> the eighth pin down here and the eighth pin up here, or the first pin from the top on this side. The outputs, or sorry, the inputs are these middle pins, A, B, A through H. And so we go this way, and then we come back down this way in terms of the order at which these get shifted uh, out. Actually, the order goes this way as it shifts out of the register. This serial pin is if we want to daisy chain some of these together, which we're not going to do, so we're just going to leave that blank. Q is the output, so we see as we shift this along, uh, each of these will get sent to the output. And we're going to have that connected to an LED circuit so we can see it blink. But more importantly, we're going to have it connected to our the input pin GP3 of our PIC. Uh, we have to enable the load. So uh, the this pin is active low. So it's going to be held high. Uh, and then it, we're going to pulse low and back up. That will load the data. And then it's ready to be shifted out. And that will be shifted out by the clocking pin, which is the second one down. So we're going to use GP2 to send right at the beginning of the program to send a short pulse down and up again. Then we're going to use GP1 to clock that through to shift these data out of the register. All right. Um, I think that's it for this. These are going to be connected to dip switches. So we'll have control over each of the inputs as either a high 5 volts or a ground low volt or 0 volts. And so by adjusting these pins, then we'll have user control over what these values are and what these will be when they're shifted into the PIC microcontroller. Okay, let's move to the PIC microcontroller here. Again, uh, GP2 will act first. This will load the data that was individually selected by us. GP1 will then clock that out. That will be received by GP3. 
and then GP3 will write to a memory register in the PIC microcontroller. Then we will go into a loop where we read that memory register and use that number to go into the just a simple blinking um, loop that we've done many times before. So uh, let's get to the board here and uh, we'll see how this all works. Okay, we'll start with the with the code, and uh, again, the code. Uh, the initial code is just the configuration bits, the include file, the reset vector, so telling the program counter where to start. We're going to start at main. We, like always, have this part of our main that sets the inputs and outputs. And so this first binary literal, the last four digits are what are important. And here we want three outputs. So we want the, the load data, the clock, and then the blinker. And then we need one input. And that's going to be GP3 because that can only act as an input. Uh, and so that's set to one here. Tris 6 writes that to the Tris register. So it's ready to um, assign these appropriately. And then uh, we need to set another binary literal where this entry is zero in order to supersede the external clock role of this pin and turn it into an input output pin. That is written to the option register with the option command. Now we enter the main loop. So this first part right here is that initial load data piece. So we will have set the dip switches where we want. We'll load the data with GP2. And um, the choice of delay is arbitrary. It's way bigger than it needs to be, but this slows things down so we can kind of see what's happening in, in real time. All right. So Actually, I think I didn't highlight this this whole bit here. Here, we're, we're held high, so we're not loading. We go low, that loads, and then we go back to high again. So it has to be, the pin has to be put back up to high in order to shift out the, the data. Then we're going to use register 1.4 as our memory register to store the information. And then we're going to use register 1.5 as a counter. Now, uh, we're, we're using seven here. You might think it should be eight. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. One is the H pin is immediately present. So that will be read right away before this decrement happens. So we sort of gain an extra one. Then we're going to be rotating right in the register. And what that's going to end up doing is um, stopping short a little bit. So we don't need delays as small as one. Uh, so we're actually going to have our smallest delay be uh, a, a four or two to the two to the two. And so this will get the dip switches more into the range of the types of delays that we can see with with flashing with our eyes. OK, so that is just this first part to get the data read into the shift register. Now we read the data out of the shift register. Uh, and so this is where GP1 starts to take control. So the clock pulse turns on. Uh, I don't know really if this is necessary. I haven't tested it too much, but I put a little precautionary delay in uh, to let uh, the signal arise at GP3. Then that datum is being written to the zeroth bit of memory 14. Uh, and we go into one of these sets that we've seen many times now where if we'll skip this if it's clear. So if we don't skip it, that means it's set. So then we will set. So that means GP3 is high. So we'll set the zeroth bit to 1. If we did skip this, then we'll hit this, which says skip if set. but 
we wouldn't skip this because if we landed here, that means we we are clear. Um, and so then we would not skip, we're not step, so we won't skip that. And we are at a clear bit. So this will write a zero to the zeroth bit of memory one four. Then we're gonna put the remainder of the date delay. This is again, just for us to see. We could go much faster than this, of course, but uh, this will allow us to see the output blink the data across. Um, then we clock off, put in the back half of that delay. I just made a symmetric delay. So notice 31 and 12. So then 43 here total for the delay as times through our loop, delay loop. Here's the rotate right event. So this shifts the data along. And notice now this is, uh, this is gonna leave our least significant bit in the um, dip switches as the four place. Not the ones place, not the twos place, but the fours place um, because we're shifting we're shifting to the right, so we're rotating through and we're coming up one short and we're only shifting seven, so we're too short. But this puts us, this is somewhat desirable because it puts us into a, a situation where we can see the um, flashing but through more of the ranges of the positions of the dip switch. Although it's not, it's not super important. Okay, well, this is, this decrements then uh, 15 and then so that's shifted down seven times and then we've um, written to 14. Now uh, we are going to enter a, just a standard blinking delay but we're going to move now the contents of 14 to the working register so that's what the move f command does comma zero puts it in the working register and again we use this sequence of, uh, uh, well, so we will set, sorry, yeah, we'll set the bit output high, call a delay, set the output low, call a delay. We'll make this a symmetric delay, so the values are the same uh, for on and off or a 50% duty cycle. Then we go back to blinker, and that will just, the program will just sit in there the whole time until we turn off the power. So we'll just do that a couple of times. We'll turn off the power um, and change it and see how things change. Let's, um, let's first though, there's one uh, uh, subtle point here that comes up. Let me try to, uh, so I'll go ahead and build this and it builds just fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to write this to the uh, chip and we'll see, to the pick 10F200, we'll see we'll get an error here. And it says program did not complete. And that's because the output, we, we can't do everything in circuit. There, I've noticed that there's times when it doesn't work in circuit. So we need to disconnect the circuit from GP3. And so let's run this again. And now it, now it completed just fine. And now we can put this back in. Um, so everything's working now. So I'm gonna switch now to uh, more of a close-up of just the, we don't need the program anymore, so I'm gonna to switch to just a close-up of the breadboard itself. Okay, so I've got a little switch here. So I'll just turn the power off all the way. And let's notice the dip switches. So we've got and again, we're counting up this way. So eight is the least significant bit and it's a value of four if it's on. So right now, uh, let's just turn on this one. So this is four, eight, 16, 32. So this would be as if we gave a literal of 32 to the blinking routine. So it should be fairly fast blinker, um, but, but easily noticeable. So I'm gonna turn this on. And first thing we'll see is this is reading through the, we saw this flash, I'll do this again. 
Uh, but notice here we're flashing faster than one, faster than one hertz. Um, so this is a 32 is going to be about is gonna, probably going to be around half uh, two hertz. So let me turn this off again. There's only one pin that's on, so we should see the output come on only once. So turn it on. There it ran through that pin that was on. And remember, we have this delay that slows it down so we can see this come out. If we didn't put any delays in, it would go um, very, very fast. So let's, uh, let's change this now. Let me, let me go up. This is, uh, let's go to 64. So this should, be, this should be maybe about half a hertz. We'll see just the light came on just once. And now we see a much slower blink. Let's go ahead and, now this will be a fairly slow blink, but we've got three pins up now, so we should see the red blink three times. Turn this off, turn it on. So one, two, three. And now we are on a quite a slow, uh, blink, what would it be? Let's see, 64 plus 16 plus 4. So as if we put an 84 into our loop. Much slower. Uh, let's go, let's just pull this guy down. Now this will be much faster. This will be a uh, 4, 4, 8, 16. So this will be like a 20. Tough to see on the screen. I think it's it's beating against the screen frequency. So you might be seeing in the video uh, not regular flashing. Uh, with my eyes, I can see the regular flashing, but it's very fast. So we're probably beating against the frame rate of the of the video. So let's go ahead and um, go a little bit faster than that. That little blip there, I'm not sure what that actually is um, right when it turns on, but uh, it doesn't seem to influence the circuit at all. And here we have a nice flashing rate here. This looks like this would be, is this is 4, 8, 16, 32, so 30, uh, 36. So again, a little bit faster than one hertz, closer, closer to two hertz. All right, so this is the uh, imp very important uh, 75 or 74 165. Um, this is a parallel in uh, serial out, and um, we've now learned how we can read that those serial data um, with our PIC and store that to memory, and then use that. And so here we here we have a user input uh, the frequency that that they want. Uh, and you know, here we have a switch. We could use some other button or something to reset every time the user wants to change the flash rate. All right, so I think that's it for this lab. So play around with it. Maybe uh, try changing the seven to an eight, or um, try to see if you can get switch the s significant bits around. So try. Uh, let's see. Would that be a rotate lab? Uh, see if you can. So you can play around with the uh, different uh, relationships of the bits. Maybe you can do uh, more with it. So we've written, to, we've got plenty of open memory spots. So you could use this to add together two values. Um, so maybe you have a base blinking rate and then you add or subtract what the user puts in instead of just taking the user number. So lots of possibilities here for you to extend some of your uh, ideas that you've learned so far in the course uh, to uh, developing your own uh, nice new program.